The Supergrass trial, which ended this week, focused attention on North Belfast, which has been one of the strongholds of loyalist paramilitaries. Now, though the UDA in that area says it's changed its spots, abandoned crime, and is sitting at what it calls a table of accountability with the police, the churches, and community organizations. John Howcroft, a former UDA prisoner, is a spokesman for the group. You're welcome to the program. You've launched a bit of a charm offensive with a series of booklets detailing changes to murals in North Belfast. Uh, but have you not jumped the gun? Because even the, the man in charge of the UDA in North Belfast says there's still people involved in crime in the organization. And if you talk to the police, they'll tell you the UDA is still up to its neck in crime. So well, why there's, the charm offensive? I think there's very, various issues are known. Uh, I wouldn't describe it as a charm offensive because it goes much deeper than that, much more inherent. There's a massive process of change within them communities. We had a launch of a booklet today, and I'm talking as a community, the community did, of a re-imaging process that has occurred right across North Belfast, from Tigers Bay, Westland, Upper Ardoyne, and Ballysun, and it was about the removal of all UD murals. Now, to be fair, there's a quote from Percy Wyndham Lewis. If you want to know what's happening, at, at the centre, underneath, at any given moment in time, then art is a truer guide than politics. And in that context, if you look at what's happening, the massive change is happening. There's been physical changes with murals being removed that were paramilitary murals. Mm. And they have been replaced with new community-generated images. OK, that. but the UDA is still involved in crime in the area. Well, uh, as uh, it's been pointed out, if anybody's involved in crime in the MRAs, uh, there is a table of accountability. Everybody sits together at the table of accountability where the police and the housing executive in Belfast City Council and if anybody is involved in them things, I'm sure. But it's not a matter of if John Bunting, the self-styled brigadier, has said in an interview this week there are still people involved in crime. Well, he actually says there may be people still involved in crime and if found, they would be expelled, well, the from, police they would be expelled from that organisation. They would be expelled from that organisation mm. and it would be up to the police to deal with crime. Well, I'm telling you, the police will tell you, the police will tell the BBC Police will tell anyone that the UDA is still involved in crime in North Belfast. Well, in North Belfast, there's a table. Well, I can speak uh. for North Belfast. There's a table of accountability, uh. mm. and nothing about extortion or anything has mm. ever came to the table by the organisation. We are working act actively with businesses in that area at a community level. Re the city side complex has over 20 businesses. There's other ones in that interface that. Over three years ago, mm. we're talking about forced closure. They were sitting at a table with us to try to address issues around interface. And these are the businesses that a few years ago the UDA was extorting money from? Obviously, that happened years ago. Absolutely. Well, yeah, five years ago it was happening. Uh, yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's I, not exactly I, ancient yeah, history, is it? It doesn't occur anymore. It hasn't been occurring for at least the last four years. Right. By what right does the UDA sit at this table of accountability? No one's voted for you. You're self-styled arbiters <coughs> of the community. I mean, who, who needs you? Why don't you just well, go away? To be fair, the, it's not simply a case of the UDA sitting at the table of accountability, but the UDA are accountable through that table more than anything. Uh, representatives of community groups, representative churches, police, all their statutory agencies, mm -hmm. all them sit at that table. Okay, but by what right does the UDA have a seat at that table in any form? Well, to be fair, there has to be tables of accountability. You know, we're on a transitional justice programme where we have a whole new police service with whole new mechanisms, DPPs, uh, devolution of policing and criminal justice. They have to reach down to communities. Communities are creating a table of accountability to make them processes uh, real. But why them. doesn't the UDA just go away? Well, that's a question for the for that well, organisation. You're I'm, 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 I'm a UPRG representative. Uh, well, well, with, uh, with close to the thinking of the UDA. Absolutely. Yes. yes. So, would, what is the thing? Why don't they play, just pack up like, their tents and play, go away? I, I think we have given thinking. It's a pro everything is a process. You know, there's a process on the Good Friday Agreement mm. called DDR. Decommissioning, mm. well, we've had it. Mm. Demobilisation, mm. it's begun. Reintegration, people are beginning to reintegrate. Mm. And not just the change, demobilise or demilitarise, or we're actually demilitarising mindsets, changing visual images on well, a the wall. The best way to do that, sure, is we just be to disband. I mean, who needs a brigadier in North Belfast? Who needs the organisation of the UDA, which up until very recently was terrorising that community by its own admission? Uh, to be fair, there has been nothing 
happened in North Belfast in the last number of years. And if you've got certainly got evidence of anything happening in there, I would like you to well, present until, it. Until the IMC gave it just a few years ago. <clears throat> well, the IMC actually came out. You, know, hmm. you mightn't realise this here. There was a community IMC set up, and the IMC came out to meet the community IMC that, that included politicians from the Republican community, community workers from there, loyalist politicians, unionist politicians, and members of community, churches, everybody right across North Belfast. And the community AMC told the AMC to sat in their ivory tower what was happening on the ground, and it wasn't an accurate assessment. Oh, well, well, let's assume, let's accept your argument that there's nothing going on at the moment. If that's the case, why is there any need at all for an organisation called the UDA? Well, that's, that's a matter for a debate within loyalism in general or, well, give, give or that organisation. Well, why, why would we need one at all? But what we're bringing, trying to bring things back to, see, one of the first mottos within loyalism was law before violence. That is an important motto today, uh, as it was... One which they ignored uh, uh, flagrantly uh, for 40 years, of course. Regardless of that, it's an important motto today, as it was then. It's about bringing things back to that. That whole table accountability you speak of is trying to bring things back to that, to change them communities. And that process of change, that whole DDR process, will take a period of time. That is part of a local-based DDR program right. that is changing them communities and that organisation. So is the ultimate aim of the UDA to see itself go out of existence? Well, obviously, obviously there needs to be some kind of end game, but, you know, how long is a piece of string? No. You know, it's, these kind of processes take time. You have to bring a lot of people along on a journey with you. Difficult processes, lots of sensitivities involved in them processes. You know, there's a lot of people living with a lot of traumas within our communities. A lot of people would say they haven't seen the benefits of a peace process. You know, we, we need periods... So of no immediate disappearance anyway. We, we need periods of massive change. Okay, John Hawkins, thank you very much. Thank indeed. you.